the 154 level, but his last four fights have been at the middleweight class. And Hopkins, uh, big for middleweight, three-inch advantage over Baptiste, but a one-inch reach advantage. Take a look at the rules. There is no... Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to McNichols Arena in beautiful Denver, Colorado, as we present the Rumble in the Rockies. This bout coming away, ladies and gentlemen, is the semi-main event, the USBA Middleweight Championship, brought to you by Butch Lewis Promotions and Barry Fay, in association with Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. Presenting the officials, as appointed by the United States Boxing Association, the supervisor, Hiawatha Knight. Referee in charge of this bout, Steve Smoger. Introducing the judges at ringside, Patricia Jarman, Al DeVito, and Gene Williams. All right, fans, here we go. The USBA Middleweight Championship scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the red corner. He enters the ring wearing black trunks with white trim, representing the Mongoose Boxing Team in San Diego, California. He weighed in at an even 160 pounds. With a record of 24 wins and 14 losses, he has 11 wins by way of knockout. He's ranked the number six middleweight in the world by the IBF and the USBA number three contender. Please welcome into the ring, uh, Gilbert, the sweet sensation, Baptist. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the blue corners, the defending champion. He enters the ring wearing black trunks with gold lettering. Fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he weighed in at a trim and ready 158 pounds. His outstanding record includes 21 victories, only one defeat, 16 big wins by way of knockout. He's ranked number three in the world by the WBA, number four by the WBC, and the number one middleweight contender by the IBF. Welcome the USBA middleweight champion, Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins. The referee in charge now to give instructions, Steve Smoker. Center ring. All right, gentlemen, you were given your instructions at the weigh-in. I want you to obey my commands at all times. I want you to respect the bell at all times, and above all, protect yourself at all times. Now touch him up. The cats said, God bless. Let's Some stern looks on the faces of these two competitors. You see Michael Spinks in the corner of Bernard Hopkins, the former light heavyweight uh, champion and heavyweight champ. And countering in the other corner of Gilbert Baptiste is a former light heavyweight uh, legendary champion, Archie Moore. His son, Billy Moore, has been handling Baptiste, and they quickly go at it. Now you have Bernard Hopkins who has 12 first round knockouts. His last three fights have all ended in the first round. The last one to win this title in 21 seconds. And he's going up against a fighter in Baptiste who has never been stopped and has never been knocked off his feet. Bernard Hopkins is a very fast starter, but they did a good job getting Baptiste warmed up, good, hot, and ready in the dressing rooms. You come in, into a fight like this, you don't want to be coming in cold. You're going to be going out cold. It is scheduled for 12 rounds. Hopkins looking to uh, quickly go at Baptiste, and Baptiste looking to take him into the later rounds because Baptiste is a warrior. He's been in 17 10-round fights. Matter of fact, four of those have gone 12 rounds, while Hopkins, uh, the extent for Hopkins, 10 rounds on three occasions, and those are the only three times he has actually gone past six rounds. So the strategy for Baptiste is to hang in there. Two muscular fighters. Both know the career is on the line. They get a championship fight, it looks like. Uh, the winner of this one, Roy Jones, uh, waiting 
And it's great to see two top ten contenders facing one another. Hopkins is the number one contender, as we talked about. Baptiste is number six in the IBF. You know, the big talk uh, in and around the middleweight and super middleweight division with uh, James Tony beating Iran Barkley, and uh, it looks like he uh, takes over that super middleweight position and will vacate his IBF crown. His uh, next position. And now it is uh, to the body, Hopkins. But some good right hands over the top by Baptiste. You know, in this fight, Baptiste came out, the first punch he threw was an overhand right. Trying to set the pace. You know, it's so hard to get off, get off first in a fight. You want to stand around and wait and see what your opponent's going to do? A lot of times, it's better just get out there and throw the very punch, first punch. Try to set the precedence. You saw Baptiste's record, 26 and 14, looks uh, somewhat modest, but you have to keep in mind he lost eight of his first 14 fights. Not great the management. They're really fighting over his head. And that he has come on since he's been under the tutelage of uh, Billy Moore. He's had a couple of distant fights with uh, Terry Norris early in his career. And now it's Baptiste slugging away, trying to dent the armor of Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins lost his first professional fight. Would you believe he fought that one as a cruiserweight? Then he stayed out for a year, got the, his whole act together, got his management uh, crew in order, and uh, found out that he would be better off as a, as a middleweight or a super middleweight. And since then, he is 21-0 with 16 knockouts, 12 in the first round. He will not add a first-round knockout tonight. Come back from the cleaners in time. And that has been his motif. Yes, that's Not his to have trademark. a shirt, but to have a tie on. Michael Sphinx said, you have not seen the last of Michael Sphinx yet. He said he may return as a cruiserweight. Probably his best bet, although he's yes. been saying that now for several years. He was uh, in a fight over the weekend, a matter of fact. He came to a Denver Nuggets game, the Nuggets play here at McNichols Arena, and got into a uh, slugfest with Rocky, the Nuggets mascot. And uh, Michael, looked, Michael looked pretty good. He's uh, Rocky the Mountain Lion. Second round action. Oh, he's got the name. That's right. I don't know, I don't know if Rocky awesome. can fight, but he's got the name. First defense of the USBA title for Bernard Hopkins, but there's much uh, larger implications in this fight. Hopkins ranked number one by the IBF, number three by the WBA, number four by the WBC, and he is lurking and just waiting to get a crack at either Roy Jones or Julian Jackson or Reggie Johnson. And some heavy shots. You know, he said, that's Baptiste. If I get a chance to KO him, Hopkins said, if he stands on the inside and trades, I'll bop him. He bopped him there with several punches. One thing, one thing that Baptiste cannot do is turn to the side. When he bends over, he turns to the side, drops that left hand, and he gives his opponent an open shot to his chin. Dangerous, especially with a good right-hand puncher like Hopkins. But so far, it's been a chin that's been well tested. Yes, very good chin. He is very durable, hard to knock out. Real throwback kind of guy. Gentle toughness. The ex-Marine, very aggressive, likes to work to the body. He did win the NABF Junior Middleweight Championship with a third-round knockout over a guy who's very tough to take out and Ron Edmondson. Loves a tough fight. Gilbert Baptiste, but he has cut over the left eye. The slashing of Bernard Hopkins. That, and that, be, that could be because he's turning when he's bending over. He's turning away, leaving that eye and that chin exposed. And it's Baptiste now digging in, just trying to muscle Hopkins. Yeah, trying to stay on the inside. He's trying to smell that power. Inside 30 seconds left in the second. Busy fighter Hopkins, this is his 14th fight in his last two years. Baptiste also likes that activity. This is his 11th fight in right two on, years. On the cut again, good overhand right for Hopkins. Down to a dozen seconds in the second as they slug away to end the second round. And we will pause for a word from your local cable systems.